Good morning everybody and welcome to Mabin Crag in the very far Eastern Lake District. In fact, this location has only been in the Lake District since 2016 when they extended the boundary towards the east. If you want to know exactly where I am, I will put a link to a map in the description below so you can check that out. But to briefly describe it, uh, if you take the A6 that runs from Shap down to Kendall, I'm about halfway uh, between the two, um, and I'm in an area between the A6 and the M6. So I have the A6 to the west and the M6 to the east. Uh, conditions are pretty good for photography. We've got a lot of cloud about, it's quite atmospheric, and every now and then the light breaks through the cloud. But it is very cold, barely into double figures, and it's very, very windy. And that means that although it's good for photography, it's not gonna be particularly good for the video. So we're just gonna have to do the best that we can. Uh, so this might not be the best video, but never mind. Anyway, my plan for today is to make my way here from Mabin Crag back to the car, which is parked by the side of the A6. And to get there, we're gonna pass over Ashstead Fell. And while I'm going, I'm gonna try and take a few photographs. I don't think I'm gonna to bother too much, despite the fact that I've lugged all my heavy gear up here, I don't think I'm gonna use that. I feel that this is perhaps gonna be a bit of a handheld day, uh, so I'm probably gonna use the M50 for most of the shots this morning. To be honest, I have been struggling a little bit with the conditions this morning. I don't work very well in the wind, so it's a bit of a relief for me that the wind has died down a little bit, and I'm also getting a little bit of protection from the hill behind me. Now I have found another little composition that I really quite like, and the thing that caught my eye was a single patch of heather. Now, I don't think it's been a particularly good year for heather. I would expect to see a lot more around this time of year. But nevertheless, this is giving me some nice foreground interest. The next thing I like about this shot is that we have pine trees on each side and they create very strong lines, pulling the eye into the center of the frame. And then directly behind the heather, there's a gap in those trees. And behind that is a peak, a little summit. Don't know what it's called. Like I say, I don't know this area particularly well. And then above that, we've got the sky and we've got some crespular rays where the sun is breaking through uh, the cloud. And I think together that makes a really lovely shot. Settings for this shot are quite unusual for landscape photography. I've got something very close to the camera. So I'm shooting an F16, trying to give me maximum depth of field. I don't like focus stacking, it's really not my thing. Uh, I'm shooting at ISO 400 because I want to keep my shutter speed up because it is still quite windy and that is moving the heather and I want to try and keep that as sharp as possible. Uh, the sky is very, very bright, huge dynamic contrast in this scene. So I've got a three stop soft edge grad on, but that's not doing enough for me. Uh, so I'm also going to bracket. Um, I'm, I've, I'm underexposing by a stop and then bracketing two stops either side. And I might blend those together in Lightroom or I might just take the best exposure and try and work with that. I've come down from where I was shooting before and I'm making my way back to Ashted Fell and then eventually to the car. And on the way, I've called in at this vantage point here. And from up here, you get wonderful views of the Borrowdale Valley below. And in the bottom of the valley, there's a beck that snakes its way off into the distance. And I think this makes for a lovely shot. Made even better by the fact that there is some lovely light on the valley itself. And we've got some beautiful greens. It's really bringing those greens out. And I think that that's something that's really helped me with my photography this summer. Normally I don't shoot uh, this time of year. I would normally take a break, but because of lockdown, I've continued to shoot. And I found that rather than trying to work against the greens, and normally in my post-processing, I would favor oranges and uh, yellows, the warmer colors. I've actually uh, started to bring out the greens more and I think that's created much better summer images. It's only something I'm going to do for the summer. Come the autumn uh, I'll go back to my old style of post-processing. 
I'm going to try a couple of different things for this shot. I'm going to put the telephoto lens on and I am going to shoot zoomed right in on the back and fill in the frame with the valley floor. Uh, so probably about close to 200 mil. And then I'm going to pull back out again and then try and include some of the hills on either side of the valley. Uh, again, um, pretty close to something like 70 mil uh, for that one as well. Uh, settings are going to be fairly standard. Um, I, I'm going to try and keep my shutter speed up because it's still quite windy. I'm having to hunker down from the wind again. Uh, and therefore my tripod's moving. And these, I'm putting the tripod on moss here. Uh, so it's not very stable. So uh, ISO is still about 400, so I can keep my shutter speed around 1 200th of a second, and that should give me uh, reasonably sharp shots. If you come over to the other side of the fell, you get fantastic views of Kendall. Unfortunately, the only thing that I can really see today is the weather that is coming in this direction. And it looks like I'm about to get wet. But I do want to get this shot. Now, I've got a nice composition here using this big rock in the foreground. There's a bit of foreground interest. And then a little bit further down the hill, there's another rock which I'm using in my midground. And then in the distance, I've got the view of the fields that lead off to Kendall and, of course, that impending weather. Now, normally, what I would do here is I'd set up the tripod and try and compose this properly. But because I've got time is against me, I'm just going to grab the M50 and grab a couple of shots handheld before I retreat for some cover. I did think I was going to get away with it then, but I wasn't lucky and, and uh, just got caught in the, the edge of that rainstorm. Uh, but it wasn't too bad and uh, dried off pretty quick. Uh, anyway, I made my way back to Ashstead Fell and at the summit here there's a lovely cairn and I just can't resist a cairn shot. I love using them as foreground interest uh, and allowing them to lead the eye then off into the distance and the view into the distance. And typically these cairns are put in positions where there are lovely views and this one is no different. Fabulous views out towards the fells that head towards Kendall and Windermere. And so that's going to be my final shot. I'm going to set up the camera and I'm going to set up a composition with the cairn on one side and then the view off into the distance on the other. Nice and simple to finish with. I'll be honest with you, I have found it very, very difficult today. The conditions have been incredibly challenging and I've really struggled at times. Now, traditionally, I'm a bit of a fair weather photographer, but I've learned since going full time to embrace these conditions because I think they can help you to create images that are much more dramatic, much moodier, have a lot more atmosphere to them. And that's gonna make me a better photographer. And that's ultimately what I want. Now, if photography is difficult in these conditions, then trying to film yourself is also incredibly difficult. And that's just made it doubly hard for me. Now, I have no idea how the video is gonna turn out this week or what the photographs are gonna be like either. We'll just have to wait and see. And hopefully, if they're not as good as usual and the video is not as up to scratch, um, hopefully, fingers crossed, you'll give me the benefit of the doubt. But I will, I will uh, remind you of a quote by a YouTube photographer that has many, many, many more subscribers uh, than I do. And he says that if it's easy, then it wouldn't be as much fun.